Hello everyone, welcome to the Tea Crane. Today is a wonderful day. I've been really looking forward to this moment to be able to taste these very teas that I have here in front of me. And they are very special because they are aged green teas. And as you might know, aging green tea is not a very common thing to do, especially not in Japan with the fresh Shincha tea culture. So exploring aging for green tea is something that I find very interesting. And so I've been looking very much forward to this moment being able to taste and to share my findings uh, with you. First of all, the teas that I have here, I will introduce to you in a moment, but let me know in the comments if you have ever had any type of aged green tea and what your uh, impressions were, or if you have any experience with aging green tea yourself and how you feel it turned out over time. I'd be very interested to hear your thoughts and your findings in the comments and also to start a discussion about aging green tea because I think it's a very important and very interesting topic. So now back to the teas that I have here. One tea, the one here on the right, is a tea that I was able to obtain and also the reason why I wanted to do this episode because it's very rare to come across very old aged green teas. And this particular green tea, as you might see, it's actually not green anymore. It is very old and it has been aged for, uh, what was it, I think around 70 years, uh, since the, the 70s. And it's a Taiwanese green tea. And I got it from our friends over at the Global Tea Hut in Taiwan. Um, the Global Tea Hut in Taiwan has a lot of very interesting and very special teas. And as you know, um, aging tea is much more um, common in China, in Taiwan, than it is in Japan. In Japan, there's a big focus on freshness and the new harvest, shincha, uh, eating things when they are in season. So right off the harvest as close as possible. And so aging things, is not very common, although Japan has a very good pickling culture. And you might see that instead of aged teas in Japan, there are several teas that are pickled uh, and fermented. So those are some other teas that we can get into another video again. Um, but today I want to focus on aging green tea. And why do I want to focus on green tea? Green tea is, is very <coughs> rare to age and it's very difficult to age as well. Now, first, let's go back to this Taiwanese green tea. This Sencha actually was produced in or prior to the 70s. The, the tea itself, I also asked a few questions um, about when it was produced and how it was stored, etc. And apparently it was produced around or before the 70s when in Japan, uh, when in Taiwan, some tea, some sencha for the Japanese market was produced. And this tea was apparently also very good. But in the 70s, Japan stopped that uh, collaboration with Taiwan and um, reverted back to producing all sencha and all green tea in Japan and didn't require anything from um, outside farms such as the ones that were in Taiwan. The information is available in, in the video from Global Tea Hut. I think that you can still watch over here, which is an introduction to this particular tea where um, all these details are neatly lined out. Now this piece of information that in the 70s still Taiwan was producing sencha for Japan and apparently some of the uh, Taiwanese farmers also said that they believed their sencha was even of a higher quality because they put more care into it um, than the ones produced in Japan. Of course, that is a subjective matter. 
Now, knowing that there was green tea production then, but that Japan halted it, was to me very interesting because what I see happening almost simultaneously is <clears throat> that in the 70s, the way sencha and other green teas in Japan are produced also changed. It's in the 70s that more machines were uh, taken in use, that chemical substances was, such as agro agrochemicals, um, uh, chemical fertilizers, pesticides were taken in use and they were actually not voluntarily taken in use by the manufacturers themselves. It, were the, it was the government in Japan that through subsidizing these um, equipments forced the farmers to begin using them and then also to continue using them because uh, in the first place the government says we, we give you these substances for free you know, give them a try use them one or one year or two years and then after that of course they were forced to continue using these chemicals because they became sort of dependent on them um, because you, you can't revert from uh, having used chemical fertilizer or pesticides that easily without damaging your um, tea trees. So the government, through subsidizing these substances, forced the farmers in Japan to change their methods of um, tea farming. And that is also how tea production in Japan magnificently changed. So hearing that this particular tea was made in a time before this happened in Taiwan where they produced green tea for the Japanese market was immensely interesting for me and also seeing this type of tea I am really happy actually having been able to uh, gotten access to it because it's very rare to be able to drink a tea from a time before this agricultural revolution, so to say, this big change of how tea manufacturing was done. And so this tea is, um, is, is something that I'm looking forward to very much. Now, very important here is that it's a tea from the 70s, which means that it's almost 70 years old. And the information that I got about the, um, the aging process is that it's, it's been aged very well. So that means uh, low humidity, low oxygen, um, very clean storage, um, likely in an, uh, a wooden cabinet where tea was uh, stored in or in some other sort of airtight container. And that is also how nowadays tea uh, especially green tea is kept. In the past green tea was stored in these big wooden boxes and the inside of it was lined with aluminum or some, si or some kind of tin. Now they've changed from those wooden boxes to actually bags that they can pull airtight and that they can keep very uh, close so there's no air in there, there's no moisture getting through the bag and then they keep that in an, uh, an, an, a temperature controlled room so a fridge basically and this is how tea is kept but you don't come across teas that are older than 10 or 20 years in japan um, mostly the teas when they're old they're being disposed of because they're believed that they're not uh, tasty anymore or as um, our friends at uh, global tea hut explained it could have been that the tea was in this awkward period of um, oxidation, awkward period of um, aging, wherein it's not really nice, it's not really um, really bad either. It's just there's the, where's what is what has happened to the flavor kind of stage, and that is apparently linked to the amount of um, moisture that the tea uh, contains at that moment, and before the tea can really start to um, oxidize again because green tea is um, the oxidation is halted through uh, heat processing at the beginning of the processing stage so before it can start to oxidize again the tea needs to dry out completely and so by the time it's dried out then it's um, very awkward 
it has a very awkward taste. And so that might, they might have tasted it and they might have thrown it away because it was very awkward. I wanted to compare this very old uh, aged green tea with something that I had at, at hand and I've looked and looked and actually the, uh, the oldest tea that I have is from um, 2015. So that's seven years ago. It's not 70, only seven years ago. And you can clearly see the difference. The color of this tea here is, um, is of course much more dull. It's not a bright vibrant green as the greens that you would have with regular Senja. The, the color is subdued, um, it's more on the yellowish side turning a little bit towards the brown. Um, I've smelled it before, the fragrance is really good. But you can see that as the other one, um, it hasn't completely oxidized, it's still green, it's still somewhat in between that stage. And I think for to really enjoy this as an uh, aged tea, we might have to keep it aged longer. But I thought I'd give that one a try, because also this one I have kept airtight, away from humidity, in a somewhat steady temperature. Uh, room and let's see how that has turned out after seven years. So test number one, I've warmed up my teapots and I'm going to uh, smell the aroma of the teas. They're in this warm teapot and what I like about that is when you put the tea in here then the warmth of the teapot will also heat the leaf and this will release more of the aroma of the tea. So that's how I like to uh, get more of the aroma of the dry leaf before I infuse it. Mm. It's, it's very sweet, very, very woody uh, aroma, uh, like dry wood almost. It's, um, it's got a bit of that moldiness from an old house. It's very fragrant, very sweet and mm. I think this will be in a, a very gentle, very aromatically outspoken tea. So, wow, that, that's actually better than I expected. <laughs> this one's very, you, you get those green, grassy, hay kind of notes still, but due to the, um, the withering, there's, um, or to the uh, light, slight oxidation over time, there's a bit of, um, of a sourness and acidity in there that uh, makes me think of mustard almost. A very mustardy like uh, smell, so it's, it's, but also very um, aromatic. So the next thing that I'll do is uh, just brew them up. And I'll brew them up one by one um, because that allows me to focus on each tea individually more and see when I want to um, extract the liquor. Mm. So after the first brew, you still get this um, this very woody um, aroma. You can see that the leaf is uh, is very dark, so it's thoroughly withered over time, thoroughly aged. There's this very sweet scent in there, though, and you can also see that the leaf is uh, is a lot larger. There's some larger twigs in there. So first off, for green tea, you can see that the color is very amber-like, brownish liquor, but it's very clear, and that also comes forth from the tea itself. It's very clear, very pure, very clean. Mm. The aroma notes that I have been getting since uh, the first smelling, the, the second smelling after the brew, and now also in the, uh, in the taste is, it's, it's a very sweet, very well balanced, very um, nice tea and the, the woodiness, the, the, there's almost a smokiness in there as well. Um, of course, from, from wood smoke, from burning wood. And 
These are of course traits that you wouldn't expect in, uh, in green tea as, mo as much. But they do come out in, um, in, this, in this beautiful tea. So now for the, uh, the other green tea that I had. This one is a green tea produced by Fumiyaki Iwata in uh, Nara, Tsukigase, one of our um, key farmers and he produces a lot of really great teas and this one too is in similarity to the other one an um, seed grown tea that has been grown without the addition of any fertilizers or any chemicals or any pesticides or anything um, just natural growth grown from seeds and um, it's a very very clean very pure a very natural tea but I also get more of the uh, the freshness the the vegetal greenness from the tea I get a lot of um, very good aroma as well so you, looking at the leaf you can see that they're very subdued in color so more on the yellowish brownish side there is some oxidation going on there at the moment so the the freshness of the green has disappeared and now let's have a taste of the uh, but the, the liquor is still very vibrant green as opposed to the other tea where the, the liquor also turned more brown as opposed to green because of the oxidation. This one still has a very green liquor. And then judging the, uh, the flavor of the tea, I get pure, fresh green tea. It's a very intense flavor very not really flavored it's more the aroma that is really um, intense the moment I drink it my mouth feels like it's it's washed it's cleansed it's almost as if after I brushed my teeth so very uh, menthol freshness just after I had a mint or something I can still feel the breeze and the coolness in my mouth after having drunk um, drunk the tea I also get a lot of um, this this aroma returning it's very refreshing for the mouth it's very aromatic and i only get some of the the good aspects of sencha when it's produced by fumiyaki Iwata. he's um he's one of our key producers and for the reason also that the tea that he makes is absolutely pure absolutely clean and it's it's very refreshing invigorating almost and even after seven years of aging this green tea i kept it in a in a concealed airtight bag where no humidity no air could reach it it was in a um, somewhat balanced temperature uh, room and after seven years of aging this tea still has all the good traits of a tea, a fresh tea that I would, for example, get this year from uh, the same producer, uh, manufacturer Iwata. Comparing that to the tea that we had earlier, 70 years, really makes me think then what are the, ca the capacities really? Um, which opportunities are there for, for example, this tea to age further and to explore more with aging tea, green tea in general? If the Taiwanese sencha that we had um, can turn out in, in such a beautiful, such a balanced and um, refreshing woody tea, very nice aroma, uh, very good balance as to flavor, how can we do something like this in Japan? Um, in Japan you see it's not common to age green tea, but having done this little experiment, I think that there are a lot of opportunities here aging green tea is something that i personally also would like to explore further and i hope that i can in the coming years also share more of my insights uh, with you really happy to have been able to share this moment with you to share these teas with you it's of course <clears throat> very limited teas 
Uh, I don't have very much. I think I have only 100 grams of this tea, um, this green tea from uh, Fumiyaki Iwata left. So I can't really share any of that. But I do hear, and correct me if I'm wrong, or forgive me if it's uh, out by now, but the uh, Wind in the Pines is the name of the 70-year-old um, aged green tea aged sencha over at Global Tea Hut um, should still be available in small quantities um, because they of course also want to make this experience available to as many people as possible so head over there and see if they still have some of um, this beautiful tea left I will continue working on exploring further with green tea aging in Japan and of course I will also share my findings uh, with you so if I discover more interesting HDs as well I will also announce them here and you can discover them for yourself then so thank you for watching if you enjoyed this episode feel don't forget to like subscribe and also click the bell and if you had any experience with aging green tea yourself if you had ever had an aged green tea feel free to share your um, your impressions your findings or if you have any questions or comments also feel free to leave them in the comments uh, below i'll be looking forward to reading them and to responding and starting a conversation with you so thank you for watching and i'll be looking forward to seeing you in another video mm -hmm.